Well, it is true, though, that Hamas uses civilians as human shields. So how does Israel avoid hurting or killing civilians? What we've seen in the past several episodes of um, what we're seeing today, uh, both in the Israeli operation in 2008-2009 and, of course, the most recent version of this in 2012, is that the Israeli decision uh, to uh, bombard the Gaza Strip or go in on the ground uh, has only led uh, to um, really these large civilian casualty counts without changing the military dynamic and without really achieving the stated military objective of the operation. So because one side here, the Israelis, continues to retain almost a complete monopoly over the ability to inflict civilian casualties in large numbers, one really has to question the decision making of a campaign which is only going to create inevitable civilian casualties without achieving military objectives. So but, what, but what is the reasoning behind all this? there's a ceasefire in place, it seems like Hamas violates it. Uh, unfortunately, that's just empirically untrue. And if you look at the previous it's not instances... Untrue. Look, I, I'm, I'm happy to point you to, in fact, your own reporting on CNN uh, when in 2008 the ceasefire that was established by... I'm talking uh, about now this latest ceasefire was supposed to be in place for five hours and there were rockets fired into Israel. Well, I know we had a statement earlier from uh, a leadership in the United Nations that said that that uh, truce was more or less um, uh, abided by by both sides and and there is an ongoing situation on the ground that's not really easy to control most uh, ceasefires that are initiated in a short notice and last for a short period of time are not going to be perfect in terms of a complete absence of fire um, but uh, it's just simply untrue that ceasefires are broken by the Palestinian side it's actually the opposite that's true both in 2008 and 2012 we saw ceasefire agreements that were shattered by uh, Israeli strikes.